Hey guys, welcome to Drinking with Dave, where each episode I sample a different drink and then pair it with classical music. And today we'll be heading back to my favorite region of Scotland, Isla, to try the Kilcoman Machir Bay. So Kilcoman is unique in that they call themselves a farm distillery, and it's a mostly self-sufficient operation. They pretty much do everything there on site. It's also a fairly new distillery. Uh, it was founded in 2005 and became the first new distillery on Isla in 124 years. Uh, the Ardenaho Distillery has opened since then, uh, making it the youngest distillery now. But uh, I want to say their, their first product that they actually put out, their first release came out in 2011. So we're, we're talking about uh, younger whiskeys, at least at uh, this stage that they specialize in. Uh, now this particular scotch is aged six years. And I think some people will see a younger age statement on scotch and assume it's not gonna be as good. And I just wanna clear that up because uh, there's a lot to be said for younger whiskeys. Older whiskeys tend to be higher in price, which has led many people to the assumption that they must be better. And don't get me wrong, there are some amazing older whiskeys out there. But what you're paying for is the rarity, not the quality. Uh, there's really a sweet spot when it comes to scotch, and that's between the 10-year and the 18-year range. And obviously, this is outside of that. But the longer a scotch uh, sits in a barrel, the more the impact of the, the flavors start to diminish, and the oak tends to take over. And you have great whiskeys on both ends of that spectrum. But by the time you get to 25 years, most of that whiskey has already been unbarreled. And so you're dealing with a very limited quantity. It's basic supply and demand. So what you're actually paying a higher price for is the limited supply uh, of that bottle. Now, younger whiskeys tend to have uh, more flavors from the distillation process. And you can still get some oak coming in, but if you do, it's gonna be more subtle. It's not gonna be in a dominating way that you would get with some older scotches. Now back to the Kilcoman, they have two entry-level expressions, uh, both in a similar price range, both heavily peated, and that's the Machir Bay and the Snake. Uh, the Machir Bay uh, is a little bit more traditional of the two. It, it's been aged 90% in ex-bourbon casks, which is pretty common for scotch, and 10% sherry cask. The Seneg is the exact opposite. It's 90% sherry cask and 10% uh, bourbon cask. And so you can expect the Seneg to be a little bit sweeter because of that. As for the specs on the Machir Bay, this one comes in at 46% ABV. It's also natural colored, uh, non-chill filtered, and also clocks in at 50 ppm. So we've got some really nice specs here. Uh, let's go ahead and see what's on the nose. Mm. It's classic Isla profile. You got smoke, salt, lemon, it's citrusy, probably brinier than most, uh, very peat forward. On the nose, I would say this is closer to the Ardbeg than Laphroaig. It's more meaty, not so much medicinal. Well, the smoke's pretty aggressive on this one. Once you kind of peel back beyond that, kind of settles in. You've got some earthiness in here as well, like horse pasture, uh, hay, musk. Uh, there is another fruit note in here as well, uh, although I'm having trouble identifying what it is. Oh, I think that's pear, actually. I think I'm getting those pears now. That's actually quite nice. Yeah. So also getting a little bit of a barbecue note in here as well. Uh, but more than anything, uh, you're looking at smoke and lemon. All right, let's go ahead and uh, test the palate. This one is super aggressive up front. You get intense smoke. Uh, you get those characteristic notes of, of sea salt. Uh, peat, some ash notes, it's oily, it's rugged, uh, but as that smoke starts to settle in, you get some very subtle 
uh, wood tones coming through. Um, their website actually says bursts of tropical fruit. <laughs> I've got to be honest, I'm not picking that up at all. Uh, well, let's see what else we can find. Okay, as the smoke starts to settle in, you can kind of peel back those layers. There are some sweet butterscotch notes in there. Um, grass, lemon, it has a very minty finish. Uh, you know, that cooling feeling that you get on the, the roof of your mouth. Uh, strong aftertaste, long finish. There's some other elements in there too, like a bonfire note. You know, if you've ever stood on the edge of a pier in a fishing village, it kind of has that quality as well. I don't know how really to describe that. Some hickory barbecue notes. There's actually a lot going on here, but it's a bit harsher, which is not uncommon for younger whiskeys. Uh, however, the flavors seem to be competing rather than complementing. They're nice flavors. And if you like peated Islas, you'll probably like this scotch. Um, I could drink this all the time, but in my opinion, it lacks the balance of elements you get from something like a Port Charlotte. It's a little bit rough around the edges, but still a nice entry level. So if I'm pairing this with music, I'm going with Shostakovich and I'm choosing the finale to his 11th symphony. And as always, I'll leave a link down in the description below if you want to check that out. Uh, this composition is also frequently referred to as the year 1905 because it depicts the events of the Russian Revolution of 1905, uh, which was a push to move away from autocracy. Unlike the revolution that came 12 years later, uh, this one ultimately failed. And this composition sounds like battle, which it's supposed to by design. It's a powerful attack on the senses that conveys everything from boldness and determination to chaos and fear as the palace guards open fire on the crowd. The reason I like this one for Kilcomen is because, like the Machir Bay, um, it's aggressive, but you also have several unique elements going on simultaneously. But in the fog of war, they don't always blend, which is by design and, and helps create the emotional impact of the composition. Sometimes these musical elements almost seem to be competing against each other. And while I like the flavors of the Machir Bay, I also feel like it's not as refined as some of my other favorite peated eyeless. So anyway, that's my take on Kilcomen. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for future videos. Take care.